Ladies and gentlemen, boys and pearls, welcome to episode 8 of the Bearded Pearl podcast. I'm Caleb. I'm Justin. And this is a podcast about all things fiber arts and other crafty shenanigans. Um, so I want to start off with welcoming all new viewers and thanking all returning viewers. It's been a really fun couple of weeks since we last chatted. And it's really nice to see a lot of new faces and keep chatting and interacting. And so we thank you all for joining us for another afternoon of shenanigans. Welcome back. Um, so we've been up to a couple of things since we've last chatted. We finally received our stove and it actually happened while I was at work. Um, yes. So I didn't get to see it until after I was done for the day. But it's probably best that you weren't here for the delivery and installation process. Probably. Um, <laughs> I would totally be one of those people that's just constantly like in the way, watching. Hovering, micromanaging, uh, over-directing, complaining. Oh, it's probably a good thing we don't have kids because I'll totally be a helicopter parent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we finally got our new stove and I love it. Um, totally adjusting to the... The fact that it actually cooks food. Yeah. That's a start. I mean, it, it preheats in like seven minutes instead of 45. So that's something new. Um, we can actually have dinner at a reasonable time. Having burners that are responsive and adjustable, yeah. like they should be, is kind of a nice touch. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Ooh, and ours has one of those interchangeable center sections that's kind of like a griddle grill grate. And so we use that to make French toast. I would say, so we, we got the stove. It's been three weeks, three weeks since we last podcast, and the stove came the Tuesday after we talked to all of you. Right. So we've had it for just under three weeks now, mm -hmm. and we've already made biscuits and gravy, like biscuits from scratch. We've cooked gravy. We've made French toast. You've baked two loaves of bread. Sour broughton. We've made sour I mean, we've just what, been just cooking up the storm. Food. It's, it's uh, just amazing the difference. Uh, our old range was functional, kind of. Barely, um, by a thread. But we've we've just enjoyed the heck out of it so much. Um, when they were delivering it, the delivery guys, they, they complained the entire time. They were so nice, but they complained at how heavy it was. It's a dual fuel range, so electric, double oven, and six burner gas cooktop, and apparently it's very heavy because that's what they were complaining about the whole time, was just trying to move it around and like navigate through the house and get it set up. But the installation was a snap and uh, I laughed so hard. They were, they were putting it in and one of them said, does this thing have an ethernet port on it? And I just died laughing uh, because it's actually Wi-Fi enabled. So we now have it hooked up to the robots. We can ask Google to preheat the oven, uh, which is really kind of, it's crazy cool. Um, it's it, it's, it's amazing how lazy we are. It's, well, it's simultaneously amazing, but also slightly concerning at the same time. Well, you know, um, not too really, not too concerning because we're using it. Well, yeah, but what's really <laughs> cool is you can tell the robots to preheat the oven, and then it tells you like when it's actually come to temperature. Yeah, which is only a few minutes later, which is nice. But um, and then it has the cool feature that after you preheat it, you can bake or cook whatever you're doing, and then it the automatic the oven can automatically shut off afterwards. So that's kind of cool. I um, hope you can't hear the cat who is ferociously scratching in the litter box 30 feet away from us or digging a hole to a foreign country or- He's trying to get the heck out of Dodge. Looking after. for gold. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. So sorry if you can hear that. Yeah, it's fine. So we have our new range. Uh, we were supposed to have an appointment for the microwave, which had to get rescheduled. Uh, five weeks later than the appointment was supposed to be. So, whatever. Who needs appliances? Who needs appliances? We will, uh, we will see if our appointment for the dishwasher on Thursday happens. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. And we, we may, we may be able to... I have Yeah. I'm highly functional. I'm an expert dishwasher. Um, let's also recognize that these are 
the most trivial of problems compared to what we could be dealing with in our lives right or now. Or what's currently going on in the world. <laughs> so so we, we recognize that we're very fortunate that uh, our biggest concern is not being able to reheat leftovers without using the oven and uh, having to wash dishes by hand all throughout the day. So these are definitely uh, things that are not high on the need to complain about scale, but we'll be excited to get them uh, wrapped up. Um, I don't think we did a chipmunk update last time, but so. in chipmunk related news, depending on how long it takes us to record next time, uh, we have our building permit for our front walkway. We will make sure to take some fun before and after pictures so that we can see the chipmunk housing uh, torn down and replaced. What did you say? Chipmunk housing. <laughs> Where the chipmunks live? I don't know the German word for chipmunk. Uh, feel free to add that in your comments. Uh, if, if anybody knows. I know we have a couple of, uh, of German viewers. Um, so there's our test for today. Learn the word for chipmunk. I know the word for squirrel, but I'm not going to attempt to say it with dozens of people watching who actually know how to speak who language. actually know how to speak German yep. um, <clears throat> yeah so we're excited to get the walkway fixed uh, we've had a busy few weeks yeah we have overseeded the lawn and it looks amazing we've been preparing all the, the dead patches to fill in yeah the the stress of summer heat uh, took its toll on the lawn but it's looking phenomenal right now which is nice uh, our mums are blooming all of our fall flowers look great uh, I think we're supposed to have temperatures. We have like fake fall right now. So uh, we said sweater weather. Well, we said that. And well, we're, we're wearing shawls yeah, it's... and sweating to death and turned on the air conditioning. Oh, uh, we say fake fall, but last year around this time, well, about two weeks from now, <clears throat> we got six inches of snow. So it's we have, happening. A, we have a weird window of. Yeah, I think we have lows in the 30s uh, this coming week yeah. or next week. So. It's going to cool back down. We've had, a, I mean, an absolutely beautiful week last week. The weather's been great. Um, things have been good. We've been busy. We've canned. We canned after we talked to everybody last. Yeah, what, what did we do? We did sauerkraut. We canned. Pears. How much sauerkraut did we can? A lot. I don't remember. It's a very accurate term. A lot of sauerkraut. 19 pints? 19 pints, maybe? I think. And we canned pears. I think we did maybe nine quarts. Yeah, I got a half a bushel of pears. Of pears. And only ended up doing nine quarts because I was kind of sick of <laughs> peeling and slicing and canning pears. Um, but those are done. And then we've got a few left over to eat for fresh. And this afternoon after we're done, we're going to can jalapenos. We'll do candied jalapenos, which we have an example of right here so these are these are last year's and it depends on the jalapenos but the the between the canning and kind of the i don't know what you would call it the canning liquid that they're in um it really kind of miles them out a little bit so miles they're not them out yeah well mellows mellows whatever um <laughs> shut up so mild they're so mild and delicious on everything um no they're really good so we got the recipe after watching a uh, episode of the fat squirrel uh amy beth is hilarious and amazing and supremely talented and she canned these candied jalapenos and so they're in a almost like a it's not quite a sugar syrup because there's vinegar in there, but um, so there's apple cider vinegar and some spices and sugar, cayenne, cayenne pepper, mm -hmm, and some sugar. And so the jalapenos themselves have a lot of texture left, um, so they're nice and kind of crunchy and um, it's kind of like a cross between spicy, a bread and butter pickle and a jalapeno. Yes. So they they have a little bit well. These from last year. These ones have a little bit of heat. You'll see some red ones in there that we let over ripen on yeah, the plants well, on that's, purpose. That's how all of our jalapeno, well, not all, but most of our jalapenos are right now on the plants um, because we just haven't gotten around to canning them yet. So we'll be doing that today, but they're all going to be real fiery. Real uh, but that's okay. They're tasty. So we put these on like tacos and hamburgers, hamburgers barbecue, sandwiches, barbecue, um, fish fish shrimp Ooh, yeah we made that really good like chili glazed shrimp um 
so the the canning liquid that's in there is almost like a syrup and it's really good to brush over like chicken or pork or fish um that's tasty so clearly we're do we those. put it on everything yeah it's like frank's red hot i put that <laughs> on everything um so we're gonna do those today and then we're gonna can some beets and we'll do pickled beets and just regular plain canned beets because um, we have a lot in the garden and then I picked some up from the farmer's market and they're really tasty. I wasn't really a beet lover as a child or really growing up, but... Speaking of beets, just beets. totally unrelated. Interrupt me, steal the show. Um, beets stain everything this color. Where's the connection there? <laughs> stream, stream of consciousness. Okay. Um, and now I lost mine. You didn't like beets as a child? Oh, yeah. And so, as I matured into a beet connoisseur... Oh, I was wondering where you were going with that. It's been fun to try different um, ways to cook them, and I mean, part of why I probably hated them growing up is because we just ate them boiled. Mm. Not the best. Mmm. Mm, dirt. Boiled beets. Um, I mean, I would eat them now. Yeah. But mm. probably not just boiled. But so like canned beets are totally different than just a plain boiled beet, and I don't know how or why, but they just taste different to me. Because they're in a jar. And that's probably it. Um, but then we did pickled beets last year, and we did a black peppercorn and ginger pickling yes. liquid, and it was so good. Um, so we'll probably do something like that again um, with a bunch of onions, and they're just really tasty. So we'll do all that canning and. Then we're mostly done. Mostly done. We may that's... do some, oh, I guess that's not true. We will probably do maybe apple butter or applesauce. Probably applesauce. Something, we have some apple butter left from last year. Something with apples. And we tried to go last weekend to pick raspberries uh, at a, a farm that's about 45 minutes from our house. And they posted on Facebook, come now, pick raspberries. Like, it's happening. Mm. And then we got there and the guy was like, by the way, R are real late. hard picking. It's still early, about a week or ten days out. So, <laughs> we walked around for about an hour. Got and a between pint. two of us, picked a barely full pint of raspberries. Yeah. So we'll um, we'll go back and pick raspberries and can jam. Raspberry jam is one of our favorites. I'll probably freeze some this year too. Yeah. Um, but other than so maybe good. apples and raspberry jam, we're mostly done. Mm -hmm. And then, I'll have to kind of show off our pantry area where we have all the canned goods because it's really fun to see the shelves full of all the different jars and yeah. um, stuff that's in there so almost done almost ready to put the kitchen back together <laughs> from like august to october it's just a disaster of canning this canning that <laughs> pressure canners canning pots mm -hmm. canning supplies jars lids there's just no point in putting it away well this year it's been especially tricky because everyone is doing this and not everyone, but um, a lot of I think a lot more people are doing things that normally take a ton of time because they're at home, and all canning supplies everywhere has been sold out or really hard to get a hold of. And we almost witnessed three meltdowns at our hardware stores oh, yeah. because people were just <clears throat> so upset because they had so much food to can. One couple in particular was canning like two bushels of tomatoes, and they didn't have any lids, and they weren't going to go and buy new packs of jars to get the lids and I typically to avoid something like that from happening I always keep a good stock of lids on hand from year to year um, and then this year I ended up going on line and purchasing kind of a bulk pack of 12 packs of the wide mouth and the regular mouth lids just to have on hand and make sure that I didn't run into that problem because we had so much stuff to can that it's always the worst when you run out of that stuff but almost done what else have we done we got our fall decorations <laughs> and by got our fall decorations we also put up a like put away the remainder of our easter decorations it was a wreath and yeah. it it wasn't inherently easter it was like robin's egg blue rocks eggs eggs painted to look like rocks whatever or and looking like Robin's eggs. 
No, because Robin's eggs aren't speckled like rocks. It looked like a rock. Except they were eggs. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, it looked good. We got so the we Easter decorations off. put up, and we got fall decorations we, put out. We haven't had company in. Right? Why? Why bother? I don't know how long. Um, but it looked good in the living room, so we left it up. But So we finally kind of switched out some of the fall decorations inside. And then outside, got our mums planted, and got some pumpkins. And then... A lot of pumpkins. Well, and I then got some more pumpkins. Yeah. I wanted a hay bale to put off to the side of our front entryway and have a couple more pumpkins. And so we... I decided to go and stop at the place that my parents went and got all of these awesome like gourds and pumpkins and squash at and my parents sense of direction isn't very accurate or their so, sense of time yeah so they said oh yeah it's just down the road and you turn left and you'll see a barn it's typical midwest directions down the road turn left at the barn you can't and you'll, miss it yeah you can't miss it i was gone <laughs> for 45 minutes one direction and finally, I call my mom, and I'm like, am I missing something? I, I am now trailing a ton of semi-trucks, and I think there's a quarry up ahead, and I haven't seen anything. No, no, you're almost there. Yeah, keep going. And she's like, it'll, it'll pop up. There's a big barn. You'll see it. You can't miss it. Well, as I'm on the phone with her, sure enough, I pull up, and there's the big red barn full of pumpkins. But it, I was there maybe 10 minutes, and I was gone an hour and a half just to get these pumpkins. Well, in the irony of that I needed a hay bale and a couple of pumpkins, or that's what I wanted to get, um, I th thought, like, all right, I have $25 in my wallet. No biggie. $25 worth of pumpkins and stuff isn't you excessive. Let, you should have let me pay earlier in the week, and then you would have had... I should have. Because... Need. I got there, and it wasn't a $20 bill in my wallet. Um, it was a $50 bill, because I paid my parents' phone bill for them, and my mom gave me cash for it. And I don't ever usually keep bills that high in my wallet. So I was like, oh, yeah, 25 bucks. Well, I pull it out, and the man isn't there to make change for me, so I had to then scramble and pack my car full of $50 worth of pumpkins, which is not a bad thing. but. We already got a ton of pumpkins and squash, and so they're everywhere. I mean, everywhere. Pumpkin here. Pump it's like it's like an episode of Oprah. Like you get a pumpkin, you get a pumpkin. Pumpkins everywhere. Bam! Pumpkins. Um, That's what our whole. It looks great. It look yeah, it looks great. But I don't know what we're gonna do with them in fall, at the end of the well, season when they'll probably freeze in two weeks anyway, and so. then deflate into like a pancake. Yeah. Oh well, they look nice but it right looks now. Fun. Um, yeah, so that was interesting. But oh, maybe maybe something. we'll put a picture like here. Yeah, somewhere in here. I'll, I don't know. I say that like I know how to do it, but I think you figured it out. I f yeah, I figured it out. Yeah. Um, I'll throw a couple of pictures in there, and we'll kind of cycle through them. But it's kind of fun to see all the leaves turning. I feel like we're gonna have a really beautiful it's leaf here. Gorgeous outside. I think that's kind of been it. Just we got to go. Uh, well, Ooh, yeah. gosh, almost twenty minutes already. Uh, we can talk a lot. We got to spend the day yesterday again. Uh, installment number five of porch knitting mm -hmm. with uh, some friends of ours in the Milwaukee area. So we've had a nice social distancing uh, knit afternoon every other Saturday for the last. Well, this was the fifth this time. The fifth time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we in enjoyed getting to go down again yesterday and. Just so nice to be with some friends. Stay safe. You know, if we have to get close for any reason, you know, well, like if someone has to teach me how to do German short rows, you know, we mask up. Uh, we we don't hug. Don't you know? The temptation is real. Yeah, but it's it's, it's, it's still so tough. But also just so much fun. So uh, another really fun day hanging out with Kathy, Renee, and Kathy, and got to do some fun knitting and laugh and you know tell the drama of our lives and almost, it's about as normal as anything we've done lately so i discovered i knit my spice sweater basically entirely wrong it's <laughs> fine we'll, we'll get there we'll get there yeah um so that's it 
but yeah, it's that's been great. kind it's... of what we've been up to. I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but we're exhausted. Uh, well, we, and, and busy. it's just really busy towards the the end of summer. This is and that time. So, you know, we're just kind of getting ready for fall and winter and all things cozy. And it's... Speaking of cozy, what are you wearing? I am wearing the... Uh... Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't remember what it is. <laughs> it's the... Um... Hipster? Yes. The hipster shawl. Good lord. Boom! Um, so this is the hipster shawl. I'm telling shawl you, by Hobie. two cups of tea and a Claritin D, and I am firing on all cylinders. My allergies have been really bad this year, but um, I have a pumpkin spice cold brew from oh, Starbucks. We, did, we didn't talk about the name of the episode, Pumpkin Spice. It's fall, y'all. Um, it's officially actually autumn. That cup is a mess. Right. I'm just... Um... I'm not a I'm not a coffee drinker, but this is how we started our day yesterday. I went to Starbucks at eight o'clock in the morning before we headed down, and I ordered a venti cold, no, a venti pumpkin cream cold brew, and a venti quad shot pumpkin spice, spice latte, latte with almond milk. Keep the whip, both for him. My heart didn't stop from all the caffeine, so that's a good thing. Um, and I think you slept last night. I don't remember when I fell asleep, though. Yeah. It took a while. But it's but it was good. It's officially the season of pumpkin. We ate, oh, the pumpkin coffee cake uh, that we showed last time. Mm. We ate the heck out of that thing, and it is delicious. It's, it's been so funny to see how many other people have made that, and, like, they'll so take good. us in the photos. And so we, we always love it when you all take <laughs> us in photos and share things and send us messages. And, I mean, within that first couple of days, there was probably two dozen coffee cakes that I saw floating around on Instagram. Yep. Um, but tis, it's really good. Tis the season. It's a really good recipe. Yeah. Okay, so my my attention, uh, oh, yeah. or lack thereof, Hold on, let's go back. took us from shawl to spice, but back to yeah, shawl. back to shawl. Look at um, me. Hipster keep, shawl keep, keep, by Hohi. Why am I Hohi stopping Lo today? I don't know. It's probably loud. Um, by Hohi Locatelli. And I knit mine out of Malabrigo... Uh, Rios? Mm -mm. It's the... Oh. oh, it's worsted. It's just their their Malabrigo plain worsted, um, which is a a single spun, and I can't remember the color right now. I have Red. a Ravelry page. Reddish. Um, but I love it. I love the fringe. I haven't trimmed it yet, um, so some of it's, it's a little. It's extra fringy. It's extra fringy. It's my Stevie Nicks shawl, my twirly fringy shawl. But um, I love it. I love this kind of oxblood color, and I've made two of these. Mm -hmm. And I will definitely make another one. It's just a great pattern. I love the little kind of cross hatching stitches, and they're super fun to make. And the texture is awesome. And then it's got this kind of, it's just a really good shawl. It's yeah. a great pattern. Uses three skeins of like a worsted or a DK. Um, and that's with the fringe. And you wouldn't necessarily have to add the fringe. And I actually doubled both the length and the amount of fringe in mine. I mean, if you're going to put fringe on something, yeah. you can never go, go big or go home. Um, but I love it. It's, it's one of my most worn shawls. And I should probably actually finish it one of these days, huh? Whatever. COVID. I mean, I did this. It's the excuse for well it. I mean, I blame, I blame COVID but that we left an Easter wreath on the wall until September. I mean, it's well, fine. But it looked good, so. Yeah, who cares? And we also we didn't have company. But anyway. What am I wearing? Thanks for asking. I'm so glad you brought that up. By the way, I got dressed first today. Gray shirt, red shawl. Whatever. It it never fails. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Uh huh. It never fails that we will get dressed separately, <clears throat> and we'll be going out to somewhere. And I mean, more often than not, it happens when we're going to meet people and we're running late. We'll both get dressed and then we'll meet each other in the kitchen before we walk out the door and we're both wearing the same thing that's because you have no original ideas <gasps> so that's i'm because you have no fashion sense and you have to copy me <sighs> whatever anywho i'm wearing my dotted rays by stephen west and i knit it out of miss babs her yummy two ply toes it was a gradient kit i think called the edge of temptation mm -hmm. which i purchased because i love the color because i fell in love with this shawl yeah and then i stole it yeah and i'll steal it back this is actually the first time i've worn it uh and i have it on today 
mostly to cover up the fact that I'm wearing a plain t-shirt that says like I'm Polish on it. Uh, so this uh, jazzes me up a little bit, and it's fall, so why not? So there's what we've got. Yeah. 25 minutes in, let's talk, let's talk more knitting. knitting. Do, do you want to start, or should we talk about sweater catastrophe 2020? Oh, no. Before we talk about knitting, we're going to talk about sewing. We have a plan. Do, you, do we? Yeah, we're going to talk about what we've been working on. Okay. But we're going to start with sewing because it's smaller. This is not shop updates. This is just sewing projects we've worked on because mm -hmm. as we've shared and as many of you have commented on, we have entirely too many hobbies. Yeah, yeah. I made, this is a, a couple of weeks ago, well, maybe a month ago I finished this, but it's been in use and so I haven't been able to show it because every time we go to record, something it's, is sitting on it. Yeah. But I had the idea, so we, we do a lot of canning and one of the challenges we face is you know you've got hot jars that go into the canner then you have hot jars that come out of the canner and you have to leave them sitting once they come out for several hours up to 24 hours until they cool uh, to make sure that they seal properly and some of them when they come out i mean are still actively boiling like something like green beans that you when may pressure yeah, yeah that you may pressure can uh, they're still actively boiling for maybe half an hour inside the jar and so they're very hot and we have quartz countertops, so we have to be careful with the... Uh, I don't want to replace anything else in the house this year. <laughs> right? We have to be careful so. with the countertops. So typically, we use like a, a dish drying mat is kind of what we were setting everything on. And, and then we fold towels. a couple of large kitchen towels on them or even just some old uh, work towels that we have. So I had the idea to make a canning mat, which is essentially a giant pot, pot holder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a giant hot pad. And, oh, let's see. So this is the canning mat that I made. Sorry, it's a little crinkly. Uh, but we found some fun fabric uh, just at Joanne that has uh, vegetables on it. And it's like seed packets. Yeah, it kind of looks like seed packets. Uh, and I, I thought it was just so cute and perfect. And so I made really a giant hot pad. And it's got a layer of, is it two layers or one layer? I forget what I did now. Two. Um, it's got a layer of the like the interfacing that you would use for a hot pad that has the reflective aluminum layer kind of mm -hmm. sandwiched in the middle. So really it's like a it's, heat reflective. Yeah, it's a heat reflective batting. So it's got batting on both sides and then that heat reflective layer in the middle. Regular quilting quilting batting. Like cotton. And then the heat reflective. Right? Or did you use two layers of the heat reflective? Well, that layer itself is like two layers of batting with like a layer of aluminum sandwiched in. So it's all one thing that you buy. Gotcha. And then I added an additional layer of the regular cotton poly blend batting that we use for quilts on top of that mm -hmm. to kind of help with some of the moisture absorption. Um, and then, um, yeah, I, I just spray basted it together and did just some straight line quilting. I don't know if you can tell, but I followed kind of the lines of the seed packets and just did some uh, some simple machine quilting on, on the new Bernina. Um, with a black thread on top, a white thread on the back. You can see the back has a fun vegetable print that kind of matches. Mm -hmm. And then I did just a quick machine binding. Uh, I really enjoy binding by hand, but I was in a big hurry to get this done so we could use it the next day. So I thought I'd try some machine binding uh, where I stitch it down on the front as I normally would for a quilt top or wall hanging. And we just did a gingham. Yeah, and a fun gingham on the edge. But then on the back, you fold over the binding and you actually kind of stitch in the ditch from the front and catch the binding in the back. So just a nice, fun little project. It's actually worked out really well. What size really did that well. end up being? That's a great question. I have no idea. Like 16 by 24? I think it's 18 by 24. Close. Um, I was kind of following the pattern on the fabric to just get a nice size. I think it's it's worked out really well. It, it, it is the perfect size for what we needed for. Yeah. And I think I think I'll end up making like a small one that would be perfect. Like when we, have we did fabric that we could almost do. We could do multiple, like matching hot pads and yeah. So I I think uh, this worked out great. It's great for like when we were canning tomatoes. It was the first thing we used, and we had you know twenty four pint jars or something. So this was more than enough room for that. When we did the pears, and we just had the nine quart jars, it barely takes up half. 
yeah. there was plenty of room in between. So I think my next project that I'll make with some of the extra fabric is to make one that's about half the size. Mm -hmm. So when we're canning things like jam, you know, we, we may only have nine, 10, 12 um, of the half pint jelly jars or jam jars. So there's just no need for something this big on the counter, but it's worked out really yeah, it's, well. It's been really nice. It's been a fun um, project. And machine washable. Yeah, Super it's, easy it's machine washable. It keeps the counter from cracking, which is nice. Keeps and the jars from cracking. Yeah, keeps the jars from cracking. So that's one sewing project I finished. Um, and then the other one, we, we've not had a lot of time to sew for ourselves lately. Although you finished a quilt top. We did. Um, but I made my own project bag. Yes. We were looking, I don't even know how we got looking for this or what what conversation led to this, but somehow we started talking about Charlie Harper, who was an artist from Ohio, I believe, if I'm remembering that correctly, uh, who's who's passed away now, but he did a lot of illustrations, uh, did stuff, I think, for the New Yorker magazine, um, and a lot of his... A lot of it was very, like, fun, graphic. Yeah, kind of graphic, modern, mm -hmm. simple. Uh, he did a lot of wildlife, birds, insects. Uh, things like that, and a lot of his art has been turned into puzzles. There's an entire Charlie Harper fabric collection, uh, which is really nice. So I, I went on Etsy and ordered a half yard of a, a really nice organic cotton canvas in this great cardinal print. Uh, cardinals are very special to uh, to me. We have a very like red themed episode. I know, like today. what's happening? Orange then red, uh, orange last week, you can't this beat week. that. <laughs> Uh, I'll show you what's in the bag when we get to actually knitting things, but I ordered the fabric. Cardinals Cardinals are very special. They were my dad's uh, favorite baseball team. Uh, my dad loved the color red and Cardinals, and then my grandmother kind of adopted it after my dad passed away uh, and was just always a big fan of Cardinals. So I've been attached to them quite a bit. Uh, Speaking of Cardinals as baseball, aren't you related to a, a famous baseball player? No. I thought... I mean, my grandmother's my grandmother's sister's husband was a baseball player, a major league baseball player. Yeah, related to a famous baseball player. Anyway, so I made a project bag. I never get to make bags for myself. We're always uh, making them to share with all of you, which is super exciting. You know, Love it. Glad to do that. And we're. <clears throat> I mean, I I really enjoy making project bags and sewing them. Um, but I wanted to make myself a sweater bag. Yeah, we don't often get to keep them for So ourselves. I did. <laughs> and I'm glad to have that done, which was nice. So finished that up actually just Friday night, threw my mom's sweater in it, which you'll see in a minute. And Which is uh, also red. Which is also red. <laughs> this is the theme. That should have been the theme today. Is Orange, you glad we didn't say banana? Red? I don't know. <laughs> we'll drop that joke. <clears throat> anyway. So that's, that's sewing, sewing finished objects. Should we actually talk knitting now? Yeah. 32 minutes in? Let's do it. Um, How about knitting FOs? Oh, I'm, I'm, no. No. We have notes, guys. We have notes. Hold on. Hold the phone here. We have two two quick updates. It's knitting related. Very exciting things. I don't know where you're going with this. Yes, you do. It's right here. We talked about this. Oh, okay. So I've test knit a couple of patterns that I've shared with you recently. I'm just going to drink um, my pumpkin spice. Yeah, you just drink. All good. Uh, Matt Akers of Makers Knitting, uh, I was lucky enough to test knit a couple of patterns that I've shared with you recently, and since we podcast last, both of those patterns have released on Ravelry, and I think you posted on Instagram, mm -hmm. I think you've shared out, but I wanted to share with everybody really quickly that the patterns are both live, so we'll show those really quickly. I love the hat. This hat is, it's one of the coolest cabled hats I've ever made. So the first one is the Flock Together hat, uh, again, by Matt of Makers Knitting, and we'll make sure to link to the Ravelry page now that it's up. Uh, but this is a really nice cabled hat. It's designed, uh, I'm gonna go from memory here, but I think it's a, a DK and a fingering uh, mohair held DK together. DK and a lace weight. Yeah, a, D, a DK yarn of any kind, and then a lace weight mohair. And you wouldn't have to have Or something mohair, held but... together. Uh, we've got some exciting things coming about that that we'll share next time. But this is the hat that I knit. Uh, you can see here it's fully cabled all the way around. It has a beautiful folded ribbed brim. 
so you could wear it unfolded as a really slouchy hat. One of my favorite things about this hat is that brim is so long that you can, I don't know if you ever, ever knit a hat that you wish was just a hair longer or a hair shorter, but what's so great about that four inch brim is you can fold it down and have more space uh, in the hat, you can fold it up higher and have a snugger beanie, so you can really get the look that you want. You kind of look like an elf. Uh, and we have the a most short joke? amazing pom-pom on top. So definitely check out this hat pattern if you're looking for Christmas gifts. This would be the perfect way to do it. Um, this pom-pom is ridiculous and I love it. Matt's got some really great kits. Uh, the designer that he worked with for the pattern, or the dyer that he worked with uh, for the pattern, has some beautiful kits. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about We may about or may those. not have a few of those coming yep. our way to give away. So we'll, we'll share more information about that, but if you're wanting to get a head start on holiday knitting, uh, this hat is just a great project. You could use a worsted weight if you wanted to. If you wanted to use a mohair uh, lace weight and a DK together, like I did, uh, you could. This yarn is Chelsea Lux. It's her DK and her Lux mohair. Um, held together both in the mini Mobius colorway, and I actually we loved might it. Have some right there. Upper. Yep. This is what the DK looked like. In fact, I loved. In fact, I loved it so I loved much. It so much. I bought more. That we ordered a second skein of the DK because there's enough of the mohair to make two hats, and I wanted to make another one exactly like it to give as a gift. So a fantastic hat pattern. Congratulations, Matt. Super excited to have that out. Uh, the other pattern that Matt has released is the Eagle Eye Cowl. Uh, you'll remember I showed this one several times if you've watched our last few episodes. Uh, this is a beautiful color work cowl. This is mine that I knit uh, out of a hand spun, which is kind of the purple, uh, the darker color here. And then uh, it's a Malabrigo Rios, and there's also a uh, a mohair in there. So again, the pattern is written technically for a DK, a fingering, and a mohair, uh, but you could you could use some different combinations. So we'll we'll make sure again to link to Matt's Ravelry page for that. But that's the flock together hat and the eagle eye cowl. Oh, oh! They almost coordinate. It's a lot of mohair when we just have to get really warm. <laughs> Yeah, we're ready for next week. Yeah, it's when it snows in the middle of October. In the 30s, yeah. So great, great patterns there. Um, so we wanted to be sure to give Matt a shout out. Shout, shout, I don't know shout. what I just said, shout okay. out uh, on those patterns. So we'll, we'll get those linked below and please check them out. Really, really great projects, especially for, uh, for the holidays, winter coming up. Mm -hmm. They're super cozy Which and reminds a lot of me. Fun. Our Give Miss in July make along, which started in July and runs through the end of September, which is where we were um, kind of getting geared up to make a bunch of gifts for the holidays and, and for ourselves, uh, wraps up in just a few days. So on Wednesday, September 30th, I will close that thread. And right now there's over there's 166 projects that have been shared in that group. Fantastic. And so many amazing things and like beautiful, beautiful projects, amazing yarns. Patterns. Knitting, crochet, there's some sewing in there's there. There's cross stitching. Cross stitch. Um, beautiful projects and love seeing them all and seeing everyone kind of interact in the Ravelry threads and the groups and um, so much inspiration. And so I will pull winners for that on the 30th. Or maybe the first. Well, the first, yeah. I will close the thread at like midnight on the 30th or when oh, I yeah. wake up on the first. Laying in bed, not sleeping. Because I've had too much coffee. Pumpkin spice everything. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Do you have any finished objects? No. No. I probably would have. <laughs> let's let's dive into sweater task. No, wait. I have finished objects. Oh, you do. Yeah. I've been finishing things. <sighs> My first finished up, well, I only have one, hey. so it's my first. Well, you have a pair of finished up. Mm. Finished objects. My first one, I finished my socks that I was knitting. Uh, I think I was mostly done. 
with the second one when we were together last. But these socks, this is my own slip stitch pattern, which is unnamed. We're gonna call it Justin's favorite sock. Justin's favorite sock, apparently. Um, this is my own pattern that is not actually a pattern yet because I haven't written it down, but I promise I will. And this is knit with Kirby Werby yarn. Uh, if you don't know Cherie, she is amazing. You have to follow her. She makes me laugh until I cry. Uh, I this is her, more. yeah, this is her soft and squishy base in, uh, let's see, it's a four ply superwash merino. It's a 7525 superwash merino nylon. A really nice base. I don't think I split the yarn one time when I was knitting it, which is kind of amazing because I don't The colors attention. are incredible. It's a 24 color repeat. This is my first pair. I love self-striping socks. This is the first pair I've ever made that isn't twins, which I thought was gonna give me anxiety, but it did not. I think not. because the repeat is so long and they're not that far off. Well, and I literally couldn't care less. The socks are so amazing that, oh, we're about to get invaded by a very large cat. Oh, kitty. So last time when Daffodil made a casual appearance. A capsule. A capsule. This is Buster, our big, our big boy. Hey, handsome. Say hi. He's very sweet. Not the brightest bulb in the box. I know. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed, but yeah. he, he's, he's very nice. But he's very nice, very lovable, so he may hang out for a bit. He's, he's real cuddly. So this uh, this sock, again, uh, is Kirby Werby yarn, soft and squishy base. It's a four-ply superwash merino, 440 yards, which is, which is a really generous uh, amount of yarn in a self-striping sock. Some you see as little as only about 400 yards, so this gives you quite a bit, and I did have a little bit left over. Um, it's my slip stitch pattern. I did 72 stitches on a US one, which is a 2.25 millimeter. I just do a two by two rib cuff. Uh, this is a slip stitch heel with the garter border that I like so much. That's from the Hermione's Everyday Sock. I love how that picks up and you can see that it doesn't create any spaces there in the edge. It just cleans up really nicely. And then the toe that I did, uh, you can't really tell when it's on the blocker, but this is an anatomic toe. This was kind of my own adaptation of a toe-up pattern from toes uh, from Terry Schmidt called Toes by Terry that's on Ravelry. Uh, Terry was actually watching our podcast last time and uh, messaged immediately and was like, hey, I just heard my name. And funny enough, he had forgotten that he said at one point he was going to write his pattern top down, uh, which is kind of what I adapted. But what he's created, uh, his toe up version I forgot is actually a formula that you can use for any stitch count for how to make this anatomic toe. So then you have a left and right suck, which is really great. So Terry uh, wrote out that formula top down and sent it over to me. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at some point. I'm now being invaded by, oh. He's, he's half just... on, half of his body's on my lap and half of his body's on yours. Yeah. So I finished uh, both of these socks. I love them. The yarn is amazing. The color is amazing. Uh, I'm super happy with how they turned out. And uh, I can't wait. House to the S. Oh yeah, the color is House to the S. I don't even, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, it's one of uh, Cherie's Schitt's Creek inspired colorways. Mm -hmm. But here they are. So I fun. love them. Yeah. So that is my official finished object for knitting as I finished my socks. You should show off your others right away. Do we want to go into it? No, I've been talking too much. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, let's preface this with, I didn't, I'm going to admit something here, um, like a confession time. I, this is the 2020 sweater. Yes. This was my supposed to be Ryan Beck 2020, like amazing sweater. And I apparently don't know how to read patterns, but... Or follow directions. Same thing. Um, so I have showed on a few of the other podcasts, I am knitting the Spice Cardigan by Andrea Mowry, and I am using the recommended yarns, which are Spin Cycle Dream State in the colorway Mississippi Marsala, and uh, Magpie Fibers Nest Worsted in Twilight Cinder. So really amazing yarns absolutely love them um have gotten really far on my sweater actually i think you've knit four sweaters at this point 
because I've had to re-knit and unknit and re-knit this every, thing. Every times. part of it. So I am, I mean, I'm pretty far up in my... This sweater is gorgeous. Pretty far up in my raglan decreases. Is this the back? That's facing? Yes. Yes. Let's actually show the front because then we can see part of the problem. <laughs> so my stitch count was correct. But this is the first time I have knit a steek, and I should have been much more careful. Um, because, as you can see, my steek panel, which runs right down here, if you can see where my fingers are, look at how far away this pocket is, and look at how far away this pocket is. <laughs> That's problem number one. Whoops! Easy, easy fix. So, part of the problem is I knit eight stitches for my steek, because that was the chart repeat. It's actually supposed to be five stitches, so it's easy enough to just take my marker and slide it over one. And that's still gonna screw it up. I'll figure this out later. Um, but, oh boy, and now we're dropping markers. I don't know what's happening, Hold I'm gonna put this down. What? What am I holding? The sweater. So, my pocket is an easy fix. So what I'll do is I'll, um, because it's basically a waist yarn. So I'll unpick these couple of stitches so it lines up appropriately, and then I'll Kitchener it back closed, and then I'll just pick apart these after I snip the yarn. Easy fix for that one. But because my steek is off, and I didn't realize that the beginning of my steek, which is right here, is not the beginning of my row, um, I counted from the edge of my steek here instead of the middle of my steek, which was supposed to be the beginning of my row, and then so everything is kind of twisted uh, like six stitches off. So this panel is correct. This panel is six stitches short because I counted from the wrong side of my steek. So now I have to rip out my sleeves. Um, not my whole sleeve, but just rip out the regular decreases, which I was getting so close. You have to take out this part of the sweater. Yes, take your to where to where off, I joined them to the to the body. Move your stitch marker to the center of the round. Move my stitch marker to the center of my steek, which is where it was supposed to be, and that's what the pattern tells you. I just and then put them back on. Pay attention, and then put them back on, and then Do I should be good to go. Um, but I'm loving the way it's knitting up. All things. It's aside. beautiful, and it will be done soon. Um, but I love it. The The colors are knitting up really nicely together. Oh my gosh, what's and happening? Yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot going on right now just because it's in timeout. But um, I meant what's happening because there's a cat on my lap. I'm so glad that, and, and I found this out while we were doing our kind of porch knitting yesterday with our friends. Um, thank God they were there to help me kind of walk through the issues because I just couldn't comprehend. Masked up, shining what? flashlights on the sweater, <laughs> counting stitches. Um, <laughs> and, and the fix should be relatively simple. It's just the... How nice, though, that, time. you know, s some sweaters that have pockets, mm -hmm. or like cardigans, you know, the pocket is much more... This is surprisingly the, easy so the sweater, to fix at this point. Yes, well, and the sweater isn't challenging to knit. I just have made... Every mistake possible. Every mistake possible. Um, because of my own, like, knitter error. And <laughs> it's just laughable at this point. I've re-knit my sleeves two or three times. Um, I needed to knit them longer. One of my sleeves was the wrong size. I didn't knit my body long enough when I tried to join them the first time. Now I joined them the wrong way. And then I realized that everything was wrong. But we'll make it work. We'll fix it. It'll be fine. I'm laughing. That's knitting. Like, it's yarn. I am at least forever grateful that I figured this out before I cut the steak in, oh and one of my sleeves was not like over here, because um, that could have been that I that I probably would have cried. Then you just light it on fire and walk away. Give it a Viking burial, just Valhalla in a little like river or stream, light it on fire and call it a day. We would have named it Brunhilda, <laughs> the immolation of Brunhilda in the backyard. We could play Brunhilda something the sweater. from Guter um, and go for it. But yeah, I'm. I, all things aside, loving the sweater, loving the way it's knitting up, I just have to get it's my so ass together pretty. and do it the right way. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what the pattern tells you. 
if you read it. It's funny, you. I feel like you've had so many problems, again, not to blame you, but it's not that the pattern's incorrect, it's just, right. you've just had some challenges. I have. And there, I've said a thousand times I would never knit this card again, but now that I see I it- I would totally knit it again. It's so pretty, like, I want to make one. Yeah. And now that you know how to do it. There's nothing wrong with the pattern. It could be a little bit clearer for people knitting their first stake. <clears throat> Um, in certain sections, because it doesn't necessarily tell you what row, whether it will be like a colorwork row or a plain row. It's maybe you, a lot for a first in. sweater, but it's yeah, I would I would say very, second sweater. Very straightforward. And I've, I've made a ton of sweaters, so I don't know why I've screwed this up so much. But it's probably because the world right now is in chaos, and so is my mind. But it's fine. Um, it looks fantastic, though. It's going to be I love such it. a and nice It's going to be so fun. And then, speaking of socks, uh, my other whip is your sock pattern, but I am knitting mine with a 64 stitch count and on a US 2, which is a 2.75 millimeter. And I'm using yarn uh, that I showed off. Uh, um, sorry, cat claws in the arm. He's uh, like fully hammocked between us right now. Like mm -hmm. his butt is on your lap. His front half is on mine. You can probably hear him purring like a freight train into the microphone. Yeah. Mouth hanging open, eyes Just, crossed. He's sweet, but he's simple. Sorry. Um, so I am knitting mine, and here's where I'm at so far. So I have gotten to the point where I need to do my heel flap, and I am using the polka dot creek yarn that I showed off last podcast. And so Ow, the, the color set is pumpkin patch, and that's the main color. And then the green is, I believe, avocado, and the orange is pumpkin. So I didn't, I wanted to add a couple of fun stripes at the top. You can't really see the orange very well across the whole sock, um, but it's just a fun little color. It's a nice touch. Addition. And then I'll do my heel in the green and my toe in the orange. So again, that's Polka Dot Creek. She has a lot of really fun sock sets. And this is the, the speckling patch. in that the speckling is incredible. Is so even, it's really pretty. Uh, often, when you get speckled yarn or indie dyed yarn, no matter what you're knitting, if it's a tube, it will start to pattern itself. Um, whether that be a, a spiral or a stripe or pooling, and this has not really happened whatsoever. I mean, it's just very even speckling. It's beautiful. The colors are even across the whole sock. I'm knitting mine on double points. I like double points. Did um, you say what size needle you're knitting? Yes, I did. A US 2, 2.75 millimeter. Um, that's kind of my favorite go-to sock needle. And that's how, that's how my sock is coming along. So I should have those done soon. Um, it goes pretty quick. And I love it. The, the yarn is nice. It's an 80-20 superwash merino nylon. And... Wow. Highly recommend Polka Dot Creek. Now She's a Canadian dyer. Tire cat is on you. This is in my lap. Look at his tail. <laughs> Hi everybody, me Buster. This is Buster. He is also like squished between you and the table. Yeah, he's 18 pounds. Not so much fat. He's a just a very large cat. He is. But he seems voluptuous. To... He's a whole lot of loving. He seems to think that he's this big and likes to put himself in spaces that are this big. Yeah. And so, so he like squeezes like a sausage. Yeah. Like me in my Ooh. Polish shirt today. Yeah. Rude. I wasn't listening to you. Obviously. Okay. Is it my turn? Yeah. Are you done putting your foot in your mouth now? I so, mean it. My, mm -hmm, my uh, work in progress, I have two. It's kind of your yearly tradition. Yeah, I've created my own tradition. Um, I am knitting, oh, let me show the pattern first. Sorry, I'm trying to navigate the cat and not flip my tea off the table and he's going backwards. Okay, you're done. Thank you, goodbye. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. I am knitting the Oktoberfest Zucken uh, pattern by Susan Dietrich. And this is a, it's a ribbed cabled sock. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. So if you're looking for a really great cabled sock pattern, 
that's free, this is one that I would highly recommend. This is actually the first cabled sock that I ever knit. And I've kind of created a tradition. I think it was maybe five years ago I knit my first pair. Um, we actually knit it together. Yeah, we, we did a virtual knit along before. Uh, we're both on the same yarn. Yeah, before we were living together. So we, uh, we ordered the same yarn. We knit the same pattern. It was kind of fun to do. Um, but this is my, it's my fourth pair of Oktoberfest socks. Are you sure there's not another? Yeah. Have you only done it four years? Yeah, I skipped a year in there somewhere. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So this is my sock. So this is actually, this one is finished. So it's a work in progress because I'm working on sock number two. But you guys, I am obsessed with every single part of this sock. So we're going to break it down uh, for just a minute. Um, it has a two by two rib. I knit a 72 stitch sock again on a US one, which is a 2.25. Susan's pattern, I think includes all the stitch counts. I know for sure it includes a 64 and a 72. Um, you could probably easily adjust it for 56 or even more stitches. Yeah, it, if, if you have a little bit of experience or you have a pattern you can reference for stitch count, um, she gives you really good instructions and the rest of the sock is just rib. So if you knew what you were doing or had a pattern you could reference, it would be easy to modify mm -hmm. in a different size, but it's got this- But would recommend having a little bit of sock construction know-how. Yeah, may maybe not try that for your first one. But that said, this was my first cabled sock and it's the pattern is very easy to follow. Uh, it's got this really great offset cable. Uh, I don't know if you can see it right here. It kind of looks like a Bavarian pretzel and then it flips itself over upside down. Uh, so you have kind of mirror image pretzels. It's just a beautiful pattern. I love it. And uh, this is the other side of the sock. It's just ribbing on the top of the foot on the other side and then ribbed all the way up the leg. So this is the right sock with the uh, cabled pattern running down the right side of the leg and the foot. And then the left sock is kind of a mirror image of this. So she just gives you directions to start that cabled section in a different place. It. Yeah, you just offset it to the other side uh, of your socks. So this is my my sock. Let's talk this for a minute. This is 2020 version. Yeah, this is my, my 2020 version. Um, I actually brought down my other ones to show you so you can kind of see my progression through sock knitting this particular pattern. Um, I want to talk about the yarn for a minute. This yarn is amazing. Um, this was sent to us by uh, the lovely Sarah of Murray and Co. Wool Goods. Did I get that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going from memory, even though I wrote it down. So Sarah sent Caleb and I each a skein of this yarn. I posted a picture of it on Instagram. It is absolutely amazing. It's kind of tricky to tell. Um, unless you, but the colors are showing up really it's, well. It's actually a rainbow yarn. It is. So it has like a full rainbow in it. This is on her. So I'm going to, I'm going to go in order here. This is Murray and Co. Wool Goods, uh, mm -hmm. Sarah. And this is her Tweety sock base in the colorway Glorious Day. So it's kind of like a jewel tone, you know, fall maybe inspired rainbow. It's got mm -hmm. all colors in it's it. It's gorgeous. This yarn though is an 8515 Superwash BFL nylon. And you know, for, for those who may know a lot about different sheep breeds, uh, you may have heard of BFL or Blueface Lester before. Uh, if you're newer to knitting or you, you haven't experimented with a broad range of fibers, maybe you're familiar with Merino, which is pretty, pretty much what's it, you know, it's kind of the base of a lot of, you know, sock yarns. Those superwash Merinos uh, are, are pretty common in socks. Um, blue face Lesters are a huge... Uh, they're part of the long wool breed. Yeah, they're a long wool breed. And I guess what I was trying to say there, there's something that's really special for me because when I had my farm, I raised uh, both Border Lesters and Blue Face Lesters. I had both. Uh, and they're, they're just such sweet sheep. They're, they're a great fiber sheep. But you don't see BFL all the time. It's a longer wool. It's very different than Merino. Um, it's typically not as fine of a micron, um, which, which can translate into softness. It's often spun differently. So if you're having yarn spun, if we, if we think about how most of us get our yarn, you know, from somebody who's buying it from a supplier. Um, mills are not always set up to be able to switch between like a long wool and uh, something like Merino. This is a, a BFL that I had 
spun up at a local mill. Um, yeah. I bought fleeces at a wool show, and you can see it, it's got a nice kind of shiny And this is a natural to, undyed skein? Mm -hmm, this is natural. Mm -hmm. It was a darker skein, or a darker fleece, I should say. Um, and you can just kind of see it's, it's a little bit on the shinier side. Um, not, not as soft as Merino, but still beautiful. Not, not as soft, but this is what's so funny about wool. Um, I would encourage anyone out there to experiment, to try different yarns and not, not judge a book by its cover, not judge right. a yarn just by the feel in the skein, knit it up, wash and block it and wear it. Um, there are so many fibers that, you know, people, people will say they have more of a, a rustic feel or they have more of like a wooly sheepy feel. Uh, because I think we're just so conditioned at this point to like super wash merino, which merino is a fabulous, very versatile sheep and fiber. But I think we've just been conditioned to think of merino or, you know, you get like a merino cashmere, you know, sweater. Uh, it's pretty accessible. There's so many beautiful. It's very soft, but there's so many sheep, sheep breeds, breeds out and, there. And yarns and that aren't necessarily the typical no, so I, I love find. trying new fibers. I love that. This is also a tweed. So if you're not familiar with tweed, uh, there's the little bits that are plied into the yarn. So you can see all the little flecks, all of the texture that it adds to the sock. This base was just, it was a joy to knit with and I love it. And I'm actually gonna reach out to Sarah and see if she'll dye me a sweater's quantity worth of yarn. Um, I think I want a solid color, maybe a kind of a purple. Uh, dark purple or maybe like a brick uh, red kind of something like this mm -hmm. in this I love tweed uh, and this yarn is just it's absolutely beautiful so that's the main color uh, then down here in the heel and toe um, so I have used Susan's in in her pattern this is another nice thing about it being a free pattern she gives you a couple of recommendations for heels so she gives you instructions I think for the eye of partridge or a slip stitch I've done the eye of partridge, which creates kind of a waffly pattern. Um, it just alternates the slip stitches and the knit stitches in the right side of the heel flap. So if you're if you're familiar with socks, you'll know what that means. If you're not, just know that Susan's pattern has two different heel options if you're interested, which I think is really nice. And then I modified it again to include the garter uh, edge that I really like so much uh, that I incorporate into all my socks now. It's uh, the way I do all my heel patterns, uh, or all my heels at this point. I also have a fun... Why do you keep trying to take my stuff? Calm down. I also have a really great stitch marker. Uh, if anyone's watching and you know where I got this, please tell me. Well, I bought it. If you know where Caleb bought it. I can't remember it, where I bought it, though. We've had it for a couple of years. It's a really cute little pumpkin. I tried uh, finding it, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, but there are so many amazing stitch marker and progress keeper makers out there that I'm sure you can find something somewhere. Why do you keep taking this out? Because we're going to show up the other Oh, ones. so I want to show you guys uh, my three other pair. Um, somebody asked in the comments last time why I knit this pair every fall. Oktoberfest is a is a large um, kind of beer festival, uh, fall I mean, festival in Germany every year that goes for what, like two beer, weeks, three weeks? That's not the point of it, but anyways. Um, and we, we have a ton of different local festivals around here because we have such a strong German heritage and so there's always an Oktoberfest. Which typically goes like kind of right now. It's uh it's in September. Late September to the beginning of October. October. So I've knit a pair every year, well, four out of the last five years, and I think it's gonna become an annual tradition. So I thought I'd show you my socks uh really quickly. This is the pair that I made last year. Oh, I didn't talk about the heels and toes. Is this an Allegria? What is this? No, it's an MCN. Yeah, it's a Blad Dye Works. Oh, this is a Blad Dye Works. Uh, Mary Blad used to dye yarn. She hasn't dyed uh, yarn for several years now, but this is some leftover MCN in a great gold color that, that I'm using for the heels and toes. And here you can see the pretzel pattern. Yes. Much more clear. Yep, so this was my pair last year. Uh, there's a, a nice segue. The main color was another Blad Dye Works. A color I think it was called pumpkin spice uh, but just a really fun color and I don't know if you can see but there's actually uh, silver stellina this was a sparkle base in this uh, in this main color and then a green yarn that we can't remember left over from something uh, again eye of partridge garter tab and atomic toe uh, so identical I also knit a 72 stitch sock on a us one here 
And the only difference in between these two socks is I think I did maybe eight more rows of the pattern before I started the heel uh, on the Murray & Co. ones that I'm knitting now. So they'd be just a little longer. This was my pair two or three years ago. Um, again, you can see it in kind of a, a solid color. So you These can... socks are sponsored by Blad Dye Works. <laughs> Oh every, yeah, every one of them. Yep, Blad, Blad yarn. Blad dye. That is so funny. I didn't even realize that. Blad, that is crazy. <laughs> She's literally in all four pairs. This is great, Mary. Mary Blad, if you're you. out there, we love you. Um, I didn't even realize that until you just pointed it out. This main color is an Allegria uh, Monos uh, colorway that we got when you were working at the yarn store in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. uh, a beautiful color. It looks a little rough right now because I had a. Isn't an Allegria or a Sweet Georgia? Oh, you know what? That's a Sweet Georgia. Ignore everything I just said. Sweet Georgia. Um, in it's a, her sock base. Yeah, a beautiful color. It's not as beautiful as it used to be because I had a hand washing sock incident. Um, so they, they have kind of a yellowish. Let's just hue. say that we had a yarn bleeding kerfuffle. Yeah. And a pair of socks bled over everything. Everything I was washing with it. And so ever now since I'm, then, we wash them in like groupings of colors. And like lay them in a thing where they don't touch each other. So that was uh, a Sweet Georgia yarn. And again, Blad Dye Works. I think this color is... Um, Isn't it Barbie related? I, no, I think, I think it's called Math is Hard Barbie, which just made me giggle so much. But it's a beautiful bright pink uh, in one of Mary's bases. So that's so funny that uh, that was in there. This was a 64 stitch sock knit on a US 2. Uh, so I was knitting 64 stitch on a 2. Now I like the denser fabric of the 72 stitch on a US 1. And then this was the very first one. We don't know whose sock it is. This could be mine or it could be yours. Mm -hmm. but we knit two identical Yeah, we, we, knit, we knit identical socks. This is on a smaller sock blocker. The real uh, story here is how many sock blockers do we have? The answer is more Well, than, and there's another setup there. Yeah, more than this. But this is a, it's a smaller set, so that's why the toe uh, is kind of hanging off. But this was the first pair we made. Again, this was Blad Dye Works. Uh, this was one of the very first skeins I ever bought from Mary. Um, gosh, years, years and years ago. But I had a couple of skeins and I sent you one and we did uh, our own knit along together. So this could be yours or it could be mine, unknown. Um, they have been well-worn and yeah, long loved. They've been well-worn. You can see the heel here is uh, in a little bit of rough shape. Um, the other pair, was actually the first sock that I've ever worn a hole in. Um, we wear hand knit socks. I wear them all winter long uh, with boots, with shoes, with Birkenstocks, uh, you name it. Socks and stocks. Socks and stocks. So here are my four Oktoberfest socks. Uh, this is for sure gonna be an annual tradition. Um, I just love the pattern. So please, please check it out. Uh, I've started the cuff on my second sock. So I should have that done in no time for our next podcast, but that's what I'm working on. Sorry to talk a lot about the socks, but it's kind of a fun story. They're really fun. Yeah, I, I, I never realize realized that they all had Blad Dye Works. Mary <laughs> is literally everywhere. That's such a fun connection though. Well, and and that's a that's a great PSA to save your scraps. Or like save your little balls of yes. yarn because you can always do something with them, like heels and toes. I love a contrasting heel and toe. And so it's, it's just such a great thing. We have a little like, um, Bin. plastic bin full of all of our leftover sock yarn um yeah yardage so like usually we have somewhere between like 20 and 25 or 30 ish grams of yarn left over and so we just roll those up in little balls and put them in there and they're great for heels and toes yeah do you have any more works in progress no i have one more you do yeah oh yeah talking a lot today sure, sorry guys you we're doing okay. We're gonna for sure be an hour now. So my next work in progress, my next whip is. It's, it's nice to sit and talk like this and spend some time with all of you guys. Be interrupted. Because, because it's like getting to sit in your living room or your porch and just chatting with friends. It's so amazing. It, I mean, you get us real time. We don't edit anything because. <laughs> Because we're idiots and it's entertaining for us. Well, not only that, but that's real life. Right. Um, we're, so we're not we're not trying to put on a show. <laughs> this is the show. Maybe the slightly cleaner version of the show, but yeah. 
Sometimes it gets real sassy. Except when you said a naughty word earlier. Back to my works in progress. Uh, I am knitting the Calyx sweater um, by Elizabeth Doherty. It's a, uh, a sweater for my mom. And uh, here's the front of it. This is a paid pattern. We'll make sure to link that below. Um, I was at- All of our stuff is in the Ravelry show notes. So there's a link to our Ravelry page that has the show notes. Thanks for interrupting me again. Yeah. This is a great pattern that I saw on an episode of the Grocery Girls, Tracy Knit One. And my mom has been wanting a sweater. Some of you commented, uh, my mom had a lot of criteria, one of which was no wool. And why am I knitting her a wool sweater? It's because I just ignored that criteria. And she will wear it and love it. She'll wear it, yeah. She, she will get to feel it in a couple of weeks and she's gonna be fine. She doesn't, she only thinks that she doesn't want wool. So this is the pattern. It's uh, a great stockinette design uh, with a lace panel in the front. It has a drop shoulder. It has a three quarter length uh, or maybe a two thirds length. I don't know what you would call that sleeve, collar um, or neck band. I was terrified when I started reading the pattern. I had literally cast on and started knitting. It's a double feature day. Look. We get cat number two. Daffodil. Cats everywhere. Hi, Daph. Usually they're not quite so. Yeah, she won't. She won't stick around as long. She will not appreciate she, she's this. She's grumpy. So this pattern, uh, I was a little bit scared. Uh, if this tells you anything about my knitting process, I had cast on and knit maybe the first repeat of the the lace chart and everything, and I looked at Caleb and said, I don't actually know if I'm knitting this bottom up or okay. top down. Like I don't know what's happening right now. <clears throat> So there's a good, uh, speaking of which, mom is calling. We're gonna decline you. Uh, she must have known we were talking about her. So let's take a look at my sweater. Uh, construction, I was intimidated by it first, but I'll say so far- At least far, you're knitting yours correctly. TBD. I'm that not, we know of. I'm not to a point yet where incorrect knitting <laughs> has caused me a problem. Um, I was a little, I was a little bit intimidated by the construction um, because I've only knit, I knit kind of very straightforward either top down raglan sweaters. I knit a cardigan uh, that was knit, you know, flat and then had the sleeves top down, and then I knit my green cabled sweater that was bottom up. But otherwise, all raglan construction and very straightforward. This is not that, and I was very nervous. But the pattern is written very well, and what I was hoping is that each step along the way I would get to that point in the pattern and the instructions would make sense, and they absolutely do. So I am knitting this out of Miss Babs. Uh, this is what sweater knitting looks like, guys. Or at least my sweater knitting. You're alternating skeins, so that's why there's double Yeah, I'm needles. alternating skeins, uh, and we'll get to why it looks like a rat's nest here in a second. Um, I'm knitting this with Miss Babs Yauza, which is a 100% superwash merino DK. Uh, the Yauza comes in giant 8 ounce skeins, uh, 225 grams with 560 yards of yarn, so it's just a, a really nice amount. I only needed two to knit this whole sweater. Uh, in the colorway Scarlet Letter, my mom wanted red. She did not want burgundy. She did not want dark red. She wanted a she fire, wanted like fire engine red. Fire hydrant red. And that's what she got. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious to see it next to our other reds. Other reds, because this is exactly what she wanted. Um, I'm knitting this on a US 7, which is a 4.5 millimeter. Um, so just to tell you a little bit about the construction, uh, and I'll show you this. Oh God, what's happening? Yarn everywhere. Um, here's a look at the front. So it's knit from the bottom up. You start at the bottom in the round. And when you get to kind of what would be the bottom of the armhole, you separate the front and back panels and you knit the front panel. So I've got the back on waist. I am holding, I'm alternating skeins. Waist yarn. It's on a waist cable, the back is. Um, I'm alternating skeins, although they're dyed beautifully. Miss Babs does such a great job. I literally can't tell where one ends and the other begins. So I don't think I need to, but I'm doing it anyway. It's never a bad idea, even if the skeins are from the same dye lot and yeah. they match. It's it, not It's not that much it's work. It's always worth the extra effort. It's upside down. So I am knitting this sweater. Uh, I've knit from the, so you knit bottom up, 
when you get to the bottom of the armhole, you separate the front and back. You knit the front panel and do some great shoulder and arm shaping. Sorry about the... Don't do that. <laughs> Just like irritating you. Well, you're good at it. Yeah. Then you knit the front panel, do some, some nice shaping to make the drop shoulder lay well on the left and right side. I'm about two thirds done with the back panel and it has kind of similar shaping on the back. And then on the sleeve, it's difficult to tell from the picture, but this lace panel that's in the front, there's a single repeat. So there's three on the front of the sweater. There's a single repeat over the top of each sleeve. So can you see that in the picture? I wonder. Um, I don't think you can see it very well in this picture. Um, but, I you mean, can you can almost see the yeah. the lace panel that runs the top. Yep, there's a top the... panel. So then after I'm done with the back. I believe the next step is to join and pick up stitches along the front and back panels and add in this lace panel. And then from here down, it's knit in the round. You repeat for the other sleeve. And then I think you pick up all of the stitches. So the shaping is so interesting. Again, um, I think this sweater was probably designed for maybe a woman's body. There's a, a lot of nice shaping. Um, so it's just very different construction from the sweaters that I've knit. So, you know, maybe not you know, man, woman, you know, body type specific, but it's just, it's a lot of techniques that I've not done before. I've not knit something like with a drop shoulder and a cap and, and a lot of short row shaping. The sweaters I've knit have been a little bit more kind of square in shape. So maybe that's the best way to describe it. But the pattern's very well written. Everything is worked out. I've had no trouble, which is nice. And I'm going to visit my mom in a week. So I'm hoping to at least get to the point where I can have the, the lace panels joined for the sleeve caps and have her try it on to make sure it fits. Um, I made the comment last time, I appreciate the comment uh, that somebody made in reply in the comments for the videos, which we love to read. We laugh until we cry uh, and, and definitely enjoy they, those. They're amazing and we, we love it when you guys comment. By the way, I'm going on a world tour apparently. Um, I've been graciously invited all over the world. Oh. I think you offered oh. me up to just send me away to I people. Well, and I had I mean, a lot of people take you up on that offer, so. I mean, let the games begin. I did, but everyone lives in so many like wonderful, beautiful places and amazing and apparently I'm spots coming that to I would like you. to vacation. So maybe he can just <laughs> stay home and I'll come and visit. No, that's not what you said. I know, but so I I mentioned last time that the pattern was pretty size inclusive and went from a forty like maybe a forty inch bust up to a sixty five, and I'm knitting size two for my mom, which is the forty two inch. Uh, but somebody replied back and said, uh, you know, I, I want to point out size inclusivity doesn't include just large sizes, but also small ones. And it was such a such a valid point and one I hadn't, I mean, I guess I had kind of realized it, but I hadn't really thought. Um, it's true though, because I, I have that opposite problem. You have the opposite problem. Where all of these awesome, amazing sweater patterns I find start at like a, a 40 inch. Or a 42. Or a 42 inch chest. And, and not quite that big. I have like a 36 and a half inch chest. And I, I like my garments to have like two to three inches of positive ease. Not seven. Not seven. Yeah. And so that's totally a problem. Yeah. So um, like a, a, a great size range should include the smaller and larger and like yeah. everything in between that actually is appropriate for a person's body. <laughs> yeah. So, so someone did point that out in the comments, which I really appreciate that. Um, I think, it, I think the woman who made the comment said, you know, the, the ladies in my life that I knit for are very petite and would literally swim in a 40, uh, and almost get some of the opposite comments, you know, that makes them look even smaller, you know, then people make comments about the way their clothes fit and that's a whole other thing that I'm not going to get into today, but I, I do want to point out how much I appreciate the comment. And, and this pattern, I think, includes a lot of sizes uh, 40 and larger. Again, a lot of variation from 40 to 65. Yeah. But uh, this particular pattern uh, doesn't have sizes that go smaller than that. And if you're an experienced knitter, I don't have the skills to translate this style of construction. Um, that has so many elements. I wouldn't know how to translate this into something smaller or larger. Um, you know, something like a, like a raglan sweater or a right. yoke sweater is easy to kind of add stitches in places once you get started. This type of construction that has the drop sleeves and so many components and then a lot of seaming. It could be done. Yeah, I, well, but, I'm sure it could be. But, I don't have the, those skills. But the math is going to be tricky. 
I'd call Amy Beth Fat Squirrel. I feel like she knows how to she modify She knows everything. how to, and she has a couple of great YouTube videos on sweater construction and how to make it fit your body um, that are amazing. And totally recommend watching them. And if I can get my act together, I'll try and see if I can link to those videos down below because they're super helpful for all sweater knitters of um, all experience levels. Yeah. But I'm, I'm loving the pattern. I'm really enjoying it. I love the yarn. Uh, again, the construction was intimidating when I was reading it, but the pattern is very well written. It's very easy to follow. Everything has worked out exactly how it was supposed to so far. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to get that finished and, and give it to my mom. Uh, I think it's going to be officially a Christmas present, but, you know, she'll get it when I give it to her. Well, and it's, it's fun to learn the new techniques and construction. Sure. Um, and, and I love to learn new things and yeah. be challenged, so it's it's nice nice to do that. And again, the pattern is great, very well written, so I love it. That's it for me on the needles right now. That's all that I've got on the needles. Should we talk a little bit about um, our, well, since we're talking about sweaters, let's just dive into that as well. We have a sweater weather make-along, so what a weather. Sweater weather. weather. Um, that's probably my favorite Saturday Night Live skit ever. Or sweaty balls. <laughs> I'm not, Which is not linking to that one. Even funnier because I am a huge NPR fan, and after listening to NPR for years and then going back and watching the sweaty ball skit, it's even funnier. Anyway, anywho, before that goes down a rabbit hole, we don't want it to go. Um, it's a a cooking skit, by the way. Cooking. Like like cheese balls. If you're from the Midwest, you know what those are. Um, I think it was more like a meatball. I thought it was like cheese balls. No. Is it not? No. Ah, whatever. Anyway. Anyways, we have a sweater weather make-along Sw happening. What a weather. Sweater. And you can crochet, knit, weave, whatever. As long as so, it, yeah, as long as it turns. Sweater, yeah. I'm going to be like a sweatshirt. Or could you have a sewn sweater? You do you. Um, however you make it, uh, we have a make-along happening, and it runs now through the end of November. And there are currently 22 different projects in there. and there's some In Ravelry. In Ravelry. So check out the Ravelry thread, and that's linked below in the description box. Um, there's so many fun patterns and yarn combos that I would have never thought to pair and beautiful sweaters so far. Some of them have just been finished or are just casting on uh, and we have a lot of great prizes lined up for this too but I mean what's more comforting than kind of making a sweater for yourself and something that's great to bring in the colder weather. I love knitting sweaters. And if you're if I you're a too. newer knitter and you mm -hmm. haven't knit a sweater before, do not be intimidated by one. There are so many great patterns out there that have instructional videos. Uh, we have multiple friends that we've helped knit sweaters as maybe their second or third knitting project. Uh, it's mostly just knits and pearls. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to know about gauge if and garment construction. And you can pearl. Yeah. You can make anything. And now you can make them a lot more complicated. You can right. go full Fair Isle. Or you can have more complex construction like the calyx that I'm knitting. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you're interested in knitting a sweater, now is as good a time to start as any. Or crochet a sweater. Or crochet. Yeah, I I apologize. I don't often mention crochet because I'm a terrible crocheter and I don't do a lot. But there's some great uh, crochet sweater patterns out there. It goes a lot faster. There's yarn available for just about every budget. In all different fiber types, so you can you can have something that's fairly inexpensive. You can have something that's uh, to me from me, as our friend Kathy from the Whatnot podcast would say. Uh, if you want to go a little bit on the splurge side, but don't don't be intimidated. Treat yourself. Treat yourself if you can. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So we'd we'd love for you to join in yeah, in that sweater knit along. A lot of fun, just kind of seeing everyone. And what about so what about that? And there are a few beginner makers um that have reached out in that thread and asked like hey 
I am new to garment construction. Are there any patterns or yarn recommendations that you have that we could maybe, um, like I could try for my first sweater project? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of wonderful people have kind of reached out and have been leaving different comments and recommendations for patterns and yarns and needles. And so be sure to check that out um, and join in on the fun if you can. We have- we Whips, works in progress, are totally encouraged. So yeah, go for a, it. If you like, you don't have to start something fresh. Um, yeah, if you've got a sweater on the needles, even if you just have to wash and block it, put it in there. <laughs> Jump on in. Why not? Uh, I, I will say this: we can't share anything just yet, but we have some amazing prizes. People have been so generous. Um, are we ready to transition to just? I'll say this. I'll, I'll continue this thought. You don't know what I'm going to say. I don't. This is terrifying. We have enjoyed so much all of the comments, the connection. I mean, th that's what this was about for you. And, and I've been lucky enough to jump in. Speaking of connection, I just realized this was red. It's a total squirrel moment. What I is don't know. happening today? <laughs> Look, red. Anyway, it's connections. Right um, we did this, or you did this originally, and I just got sucked in and I'm fully on board the now. The people love you. It's been such an amazing way to connect with other makers. And this is, I mean, funny enough, it was crafting and knitting. You know, that's how we met. And we've met some of the most incredible people from all over the world. We've been so fortunate to you know, be welcomed into, you know, this, <sighs> this community. Yeah, I've been like super weepy all day, so I could burst into tears at any moment anyway. But there are so many wonderful people out there, and just getting to talk. Are you having feelings? I am. What is happening? That's fine. This is a moment to record, guys. I'm feeling. But the co the community is just amazing. There's crafters everywhere, and getting to see the things that people do, getting to connect with people literally all over the world, uh, has just been what this is all about for us. Where I'm going with that is this community is also so generous and so giving, and we've had so many other makers reach out, whether it's pattern designers, yarn dyers, um, other makers reach out and offer or send us things to share as giveaways. So we've got some exciting things in the mail um, that we will be giving away as part of these knit alongs. Mm -hmm. So you've uh, got your Knitmas in July wrapping up and then of course sweater weather starting but just some some really exciting things that that and we're going to be able to share with you absolutely love highlighting other makers and crafters designers um, those of you that comment and, and and leave pictures of projects and some of you send emails of what you're working on and um, we love it beautiful things we get so much I mean it literally literally bring smiles to our faces. We laugh out loud and cry, like cry laughing. The comments are great. They're, yeah. And you know, when it seems like the world may literally or figuratively be burning down around us uh, at times, I know this is stress relief for a lot of people. Um, it's a way to just channel tension, anxiety, creativity. You know, it, it's positive, it's therapeutic, it can be cathartic. So just a great thing to have in all of our lives right now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're very excited to be sharing some some great prizes with you coming up. I, I'm going to use that as a segue and to talk about a couple of these things. The first is going to be some pearls gone wild, like purchases I've made, and then the rest will be beautiful things people have gifted. So, um, our one of our porch knitting friends, Kathy, sent me a link to this and. It is a ribbon, but so my intention was when I steep my sweater, the one that I've currently totally messed up, um, and I will get it fixed, but when I steep it and kind of tack the steep down, we were going to use this super fun upside down sheep ribbon. So there's all of these adorable. different- Adorable. Adorable. Different sheep. I'm a sheep fiend. I love sheep and all things sheep themed. Um, so I got a couple of yards of this and where this will go is when 
the steak is cut and that kind of hem is folded back, I will use the ribbon to tack it down on the inside of the sweater. So you will only see this from the inside of the sweater. Um, but just thought this was a cool kind of finishing. Yeah, nice little touch. Will, touch. You, will you hand sew it on or will you try I will hand machine sew? It, on. sew? Mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't really need to be structurally, I guess, sound. It's, it's just a finishing. Yeah, just a nice detail. Detail, yeah. That'll be beautiful. So it, it, it doesn't need to have any sort of stress or tension on it. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use the machine. It'll be easy enough and quick enough to sew it in. That's not to say you couldn't sew it in with your machine. It would probably go much quicker. Um, very couture by hand. Very couture. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna put this on the inside of my sweater. There's a better I think I might use some of that for the inside of my green sweater that I've never bothered to finish. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's done and wearable, but and and there are same thing. so I'm many ways. So down that zipper tape to finish, uh, kind of the inside of sweaters like that, where you add a zipper tape or are sticking or just want a little bit cleaner of an edge there or provide some structure. Um, now that's not to say that the zip, the tape or the ribbon won't provide structure to that portion of the button band because sometimes they can get a little stretched out or funny, but that that's really not my biggest concern with it. This is more or less just a finishing yeah, detail. Yeah, great. So there's lots of great ways to finish um, garments like that. But so that is from The Woolly Thistle, and you can find them online. I'll make sure to link in the show notes. But I think I got a couple of yards. It's pretty uh, reasonably priced and in, I think, two yard sections, which is perfect. Mm. Don't let me forget I have an acquisition, a Pearls Gone Wild sitting over there, safely at a distance. Where? Ah, yes. Um, let's start with this first. Okay. We gotta get going here. I know. An hour and 31 minutes. Okay, stop. Fine. Don't pressure me. <laughs> um... Sarah, again, Maria Wilco. Nope. Maria Co. Wool Goods. <laughs> Hi, take all our money. Um, yeah, she had an update with some amazing sock sets and fall colors, and I, it's not a problem. There's room for everything, and there's nothing on the floor, so I can I can still walk around in the craft space. There's nothing on the floor. Is there's a, a that is a very. Um, Stop stepping on my foot. You can walk around, okay? It's not a mess. Um, we're not a hoarder. But we are not a hoarder. I am not either. We. I like to buy things. You like to knit things. It's a good symbiotic <laughs> relationship. Um, oh, oh my. Get it together. So this is the Barn Owl sock set. I love um, it's 75% yeah. superwash merino. 25% nylon, there's 463 yards on the main skein, and then 93 yards for the 20 gram mini. And this is just a perfect fall sock set. Look at the speckles. That main color in particular is beautiful. Just gorgeous. And then- And looks just like a barn owl. Oh, yeah. It, gorgeous. I mean, those deep kind of, almost burgundy With the white brown the speckles gold. with the navy and black. Yeah, it's, it's great. Um, so that's a, a fun sock set that I bought for you. Let's see, I'm so generous. I was gonna steal it anyway, so thank you. <laughs> Rude. Um, and then I got some more yarn. This is her Tweedy DK, which is a 8515 Superwash Merino, 15% uh, Donegal Tweedy Nep. Um, 231 yards per 100 grams in her English toffee. Is that a fing you said fingering one? DK. Oh, DK, yep. Although, there's more. So I got the same color in a fingering weight in her classic sock. So this is the same base as the Barn Owl that you just saw. Um, both of these are in the English toffee color weight, and they're they're just that perfect... What a rich brown. Kind of like pumpkin-y... Pumpkin brown. spice? And everything nice! Bringing it back. Um, yeah. So this is gonna be for a fun sweater and then I watched that thought fly right out of your head yeah I don't know I don't know what what it was kind of leading to but 
This will be for a sweater, and then Yarn this is going to be um, for a cozy hubby pullover, which is a fun pattern that I will also link. Um, I love tweed. Yeah, and it's, it's really fun I need to more see tweed. how dye takes up, let me press that, how yarn takes up dye on different bases. So, same color, same dyes, and it's just slightly different. Mm -hmm. Fiber content makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not that's not a dyeing inconsistency. No, that is right. same color, different bases, and yep. silks and different breeds of wool. Some wool is very white naturally. Some is cream or over dyed. Yeah, it's a great right. point. Um, so then I also bought from CC's Wool, which is a new to me maker. Um, she is out of New York. Can't, can't read this. Gilderland. New York. Yep. Gilderland. Um, they have a flock of Jacobs, speaking of different breeds and different sheep, and she is actually a part of the Shave em to Save em initiative, which is a really cool program um, kind of highlighting the different sheep breeds and the fact that sheep have now evolved with domestication and um, different breeding to the point where they don't just shed their wool naturally for the most part anymore, and where we have to as a kind of breeder or, or society, shave them to keep them healthy and safe. Mm -hmm. So um, there's lots of different breeds around the initiative and kind of highlighting the, the individual different non-commercialized wolves out there. Fun fact, Jacob are also unique in that they are horned sheep. Not all, like sheep bitty, not, not all sheep are horned and they have four horns. That's right. So look them up, there's a picture and right here. their wool or I should say their fleeces, are not a solid color. Right. They're so they're, they're, they almost colored. look like a cow to where they're speckled or um, different colors. I mean, the, the fleeces can vary so Brown much. Brown and from, white, red and white, black and white. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of fun to see all the different combos that you can get with the Jacob. Yeah. And they, they are smaller mm -hmm. sheep, right? Yeah. Um, oh, you can... So I mean, there's a picture. It's on the tag. Yep. There you go. So this is a worsted weight, uh, I believe it's a woolen spun from their flock, and it is a four ounce skein, 240 yards of Jacob wool. It is nice and squishy and soft. Um, it reminds me of Bro Brooklyn tweed texture almost. And again, woolly, like there's does not mean itchy. there's texture, but it's uh, it's super soft and it's unknit, unblocked. And it's just this gorgeous, variegated, kind of Very warm... Very natural grayish color. Warm gray that you can see the different variations in browns and grays and cream. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a hefty skein. I mean, that's 240 yards of worsted weight. It's very s soft and squishy. So soft. And I got enough for a sweater out of that because I thought it was super fun. Different breed. It's always great to try new things and different makers and crafters and... Um, it kind of led us to some other fun things that CC has, and she sent a lot of amazing gifts along the way, and we will be oh. entering these into some fun giveaways for you if guys. If you didn't love fall before, sweater weather. Also, l hold that up and then look above my head. <gasps> you would almost think that we have our act together and are coordinated on here. <laughs> Neither one of which is Matches. true. Um, that color is... This is super fun. Beautiful. It is a CC's sock yarn, and I will make sure to link her, to her shop in the website uh, down below, or in the show notes. It's an eight. Oops. Your, your floppy, your floppy mini. Uh, Rude. Oh, I didn't... We're just gonna let that one pass. Yep. Um, so this is a sock set that she has her... What's, what's kind of interesting about her sock skeins is they are 120 grams. So you get a nice, decent amount, great for shawls, um, where you often need just a little bit more than one skein of sock weight yarn. These are perfect. Um, Boy, isn't that the worst when you need like 10 yards, yards from a second skein of yarn and you're just like, yeah. Yeah, so perfect. Um, it's 88% superwash merino, 12% nylon, so a little bit different of a blend. 
and then it's a three ply, three ply fingering weight, and this is dandelions and daffodils color. So I think that's a really great. Those fall. greens and oranges, and you can see a little bit up here. There's, there's a bright pop of yellow. Really there. nice. I mean, mm -hmm. literally, like what's behind me. All those are in there. Beautiful skein of yarn. Very generous. Very generous. And we will be so happy to share that with one of you lovely individuals. And then. I don't know if I can share this because this is my color. Like I love, I love this burgundy color, <laughs> but I will what? if I have to. You? <sighs> it's fine. Um, this is called Hudson Brick Yard for the colorway. It's the same sock yarn, same base, but it's that gorgeous, deep burgundy kind of plummy color, um, slight variegation. Again, on that. This episode, I tell you, it's sponsored by Burgundy, right? Um, that's another beautiful color. Beautiful color. Mm -hmm. Perfect for something fall or, yep. or wintry. And so that was another skein that she generously Cheers. donated. And another one is called Bubbling Brook. And it totally reminds me of kind of the outer banks of like a little stream and... Like a bubbling brook. Yeah. Like a bubbling brook. Yep. Yeah. How gorgeous is this? That green with the... This is blue. Blue. Green. Blue. Green. Blue. Green. First blue, of all... green. You don't know which one I was talking about. Second oh, of all, I do. <laughs> many people agree that it is green, not blue. We're anyway. not going to have this debate again. <laughs> um, but this is Bubbling Brook. Babbling Brook. <laughs> Speaking of babbling... Really bringing it home there. Yep. And three beautiful skeins of yarn that was generously donated. And she also sent a fun little notions pouch. That's so cute. Put a sheep on anything. Put a sheep on anything and I'll, let, I'll, I'll buy it. And then these cute little fire and ice stitch markers, which are made, uh, they're clear acrylic stitch markers made by Danielle Weirs, Weirs? Um, it's ink for words on Instagram. Those and are so cute. Her Etsy shop is etsy.com slash ink for words. I'll make sure to link that too, but cute little So a bag, three beautiful skeins of yarn. And we are so excited to be able to put those in our, our giveaways. Um, lots of beautiful things. And then she also, because we unfortunately are unable to go to Rhinebeck this year, just because of COVID and just being safe. We um, isn't everybody. We isn't everybody. Rhinebeck is a amazing, amazing time in the Hudson Valley in New York. It's a, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival is a part of it, but um, there's kind of a, a bunch of different activities and fun things to do, and it's always beautiful this time of year. And so CC has dyed up this colorway in kind of honor of the Rhinebeck trip that will not be this year, and it is called Oh Rhinebeck, We Miss You. And it is a beautiful color that perfectly captures all of the amazing, gorgeous hardwood trees that are turning these gorgeous shades of orange and reds and yellows. It, it, it's just perfect. Um, and it has those little bits of green for those leaves that are kind of just hanging on to this the is, last bits of summer. It really is the color of those stunning leaves that you see like on sugar maples and and as they go kind of red to yellow like this is exactly the color it and is. it's really and it's so bright and vibrant and saturated cc will be vending in the virtual marketplace for new york sheep and mm -hmm. um and we might have a fun collaboration in the works and keeping with the beautiful le oh, see it. The beautiful leaves and fall theme. We may or may not have bags that kind of capture the essence of Rhinebeck and those beautiful oranges and reds and little bits of green that coordinate with the yarn. So more to come. More to come on that, but stay tuned for lots of beautiful fall themed makes. This is a fantastic batik. Love, love it. It's, it's so pretty. And we did yellow stitching, kind of highlighting all of the warm colors of fall. And we recognize that in certain parts of the world it is now warming up to be spring and summer. But here in the Northern Hemisphere, we are getting ready to hunker down 
for all things fall and so great the leaves are changing the weather's getting cooler and at least where we are um, and yeah so exciting exciting to collaborate and and partner on different fun projects like that and then we are working to be able to donate portions of the sales of these bags to those affected by the wildfires out west in the western coast of the United States. Um, again, keeping with the theme of always making sure that we give back to our communities and to those um, who need it, we are not only collaborating with fun, beautiful, crafty goods, but are able to take that and, and do good work with it and, and make sure that we help those who need it. So um, stay tuned for that and we'll have more details and all of that great stuff coming soon. Anything else? Ooh. Speaking of gorgeous bags. Um, Are you done with acquisitions? Pearls Gone Wild? Yes. I have mine. Okay, we'll wait for shop news. If More. you can stop talking for five seconds. <sighs> Who's the chatty one now? You're the one that pumped me full of giant pumpkin spice. It's Delicious. It's the only coffee you've had today. It must be the two that are in my system from yesterday. Yeah. No. Sorry, there's gonna there's gonna be tissue paper. If you're sensitive to crinkling, turn your volume down for a second. This is something that I'm so excited to share with you. Um, it's actually not an acquisition from the last three weeks. This is something that I purchased a couple of maybe even a couple of months ago. But if you follow Kathy from the Whatnot podcast, um, she's a fairly new podcaster. Uh, I think st maker. started I mean, this she, year. She does so much. She literally does everything, and she doesn't yeah. do it all things crafty. Just a little bit, like she di she dyes beautiful yarn, she sews, she knits, she embroiders, she embroiders, she paints. She literally does everything, mm -hmm. and has a really nice podcast also. She does watercolor painting, and if you follow her, you'll know that she does, um, I guess they're Instagram videos mm -hmm. that show her creating some of these water watercolor paintings. Well, I messaged her a couple of months ago and said, I would love uh, if you'd be interested to do a custom painting. Uh, I wouldn't say we're art collectors or necessarily connoisseurs, but we do have a lot of artwork in the house, and we like to support local you know, local artists or just... You know, like smaller independent yeah, in, crafters. In, in, independent crafters everywhere. So we have a lot of things in our home that are done by either friends or people in our community. So I asked Kathy to paint something for us and I gave her the incredibly specific detail of, I like birds, I like flowers. Or anything you want. So I didn't give her a lot of direction, but this is what she made for us. And it's stunning. Look. They're lovebirds. Look how cute these birds are. It's absolutely stunning. I apologize, Kathy, that I forgot to share this. It's because literally I'm so afraid to touch it and we've not gotten it framed yet that I've had it locked up and uh, kept very safe. But It is beautiful. It's absolutely incredible. She painted these two beautiful birds. The detail is, it's just stunning. And I, I believe this is, is it 10 by 14 or 12 by 14 is what the uh, the watercolor paper itself is. So we have this, it's going to go up in our home. Um, I'm actually remembering right now, Kathy just painted something else and I messaged her and said, oh my gosh, can I please buy that? And she put up the custom listing. So that's gonna be number two. And now I've told her that we need a third one so that we can have a trio. Um, so like to do like, no, no, they're not really triptychs because they don't necessarily go together, but... We have some gallery like groupings, uh, yeah, of, groupings of things. We have a a friend from when we were living in Milwaukee. She, how, would, how old would she be now? In her oh my 90s? Gosh, she's in her 90s for sure. She is an incredible woman. And her name is Violet. And we love her. She, she is a beautiful human being in and out. And about a little over five feet full of sass and spunk and she's just always raring to go but a beautiful artist and learn, literally like learned to paint when she was like 88 learn to spin but i mean she, she was, started painting yeah because she played 
plays the piano. No, she plays the piano. I um, think she played the organ also. She knits. She spins. Yeah, she learned, learned to spin learned for to paint. her uh, birthday one year, and, and I forget which number it was, but um, just goes to show, like, you can do anything you want, set your mind to it at any age, and, and just go for it. But she does a lot of beautiful paintings, and it's all kind of at in essence abstract uh, from around where she lives so we have a couple of paintings at the top of the stairs on the second floor in our house where um, one of them is kind of like a winter scene uh, like trees in a forest mm -hmm. there's and, uh, daffodils there's we have daffodils one that's daffodils and, and another one that's some flowers of a, uh, kind of a, a meadow but yeah. just love having those like groupings of paintings from if different artists and so Kathy look out here we come I will not forget today to go and purchase my <laughs> custom listing that I snagged, uh, but very, very excited to share that. We'll, we'll link her podcast below. Really great episodes. And again, if you're and interested... we have some fun things of Kathy's um, to give away as well. Oh, yeah. I Kathy, so she's also... I wish I had them over here. I'm afraid to move. But if, with all the trip hazards I have on the floor from all the stuff I just tossed there, um, I'm not going to grab it this time, but I will show next time. Uh, Kathy also paints like little keychains and cards, and so I got a ton of great greeting cards that uh, she's so talented. I literally messaged her and said, "I want to buy this painting, but keep it because I'm going to buy like more things." Right. And I she mean, lives she, in Australia. She has so many beautiful. So shipping things. is just complex. It takes a while. It just takes a while, yeah. especially now. But, Which is um, why I hadn't shared the painting yet because it it took a few weeks to get here. Uh, I would imagine it would take that long well anyway. worth the wait. Oh my gosh, and her husband gets major kudos. It took me at least 20 minutes to get into that package. Packaging is always phenomenal. <laughs> that was terrifying. Like, but it's, terrifying. I mean... To cut the, you know, the watercolor itself, but... It's precious cargo. Yeah, precious cargo. So uh, check out Kathy for sure. Anyway, I wanted to share that. And then... Um, what else are we doing? So, Shop news? Yes. Uh, I wanted to say too with the sweater weather make sweater sweater weather make along sweater weather sweater weather um, there, if you use the hashtag on Instagram or Ravelry sweater weather M A L twenty so sweater weather make along twenty that's a mouthful um, we can also like see all of your projects and participate there and be sure to tag us and um, all of that fun stuff so we can you know share the wonderful things that we're creating and we, we, we will we will pull winners of the giveaways from both Ravelry and Instagram um, which is where I was getting at with that but shop news we have a lot of amazing fabric that came this week and I so much can't fabric. wait to show you guys how awesome these fun bags are. But so we're having the Huga update for all things cozy and comforting and fall related October 17th. And I'll be sure to make sure we link the shop and everything um, in the show notes. But October 17th, which is a Saturday, it is the third Saturday in October and it will be at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, which is 11 a.m. Eastern Standard or 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Pacific? No, 8 a.m. Pacific. 8 a.m. Pacific. <sighs> Too many time zones, but 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and we'll have tons of bags. I think I have six or seven different prints, and we'll have the shawl, the sweater, the sock sizes. So we'll make sure that there's something for everybody. Maybe now would be a great opportunity to say thank you. Yes. Thank you. And sorry they went so fast. Yeah, so the, the the last update we had for October, um, which was the witch bags, the cute little ghosties, and the kitties, we had a very limited amount of fabric for those, and they went super fast. Like, in less than an hour? Yeah. Um, so there weren't there weren't very many. There, were, there weren't very many at all. I mean, they were probably less than half of what we usually put up in the shop, but um, we just had a limited supply of everything, and thank you to all of you who have purchased and supported the shop and been able to help us um, kind of donate to different charities and organizations that way and it's so fun getting to, to talk with you all and, and comment and um, 
see all the pictures, see all of, the the bags pictures of the bags in the wild and yeah it, it's it's great to see that um, but they sold super fast so some of you guys didn't get a, a chance to Very get in on that update that looks like a beard hair <laughs> random thought look how oh well it's gone now i thought it was a cat hair and i'm you're shedding. Pretty sure it was one of mine. Anyways, so it was this color. thank you for all who have purchased and constantly supported the shop um, and, and the podcast. Whether you like, comment, subscribe, give a shout out, kudos, like it, it is just, we are so grateful and so thankful and happy to spend um, some time with you every couple of weeks and just chat and check in. And we we kind of consider you all friends and, and, and like we're just sitting in someone's living room chit-chatting and so it's it's great to interact and be here with you guys and, and we love it and so thank you for supporting us and supporting the shop and like I said we will have tons of stuff uh Saturday October 17th so. and you're gonna do you mentioned kind of the the October update is Huga themed mm -hmm. all things cozy mm -hmm. and then you have in November plans for holiday yes so uh, if, if you're holding out for a holiday primarily Christmas themed um, although there isn't anything inherently Christmas it's more or less just wintery themed um, I tend to not get general winter holiday. yeah I tend to not get too holiday specific more or less general time of year yeah. um, that will happen in November and then we will have a really cool kind of winter TBD themed update I mean TBD sometime in December early January yes yeah. secrets um, and there may or not may not be totes like tote bags so stay More tuned to come. but that'll be that'll be in a couple of months um but yeah we're super excited and glad we could spend some time together this week and are we uh, wrapping it up is that what's happening now? we are wrapping it up yeah. well, well we'll we'll say this again it's we're it's, wrapping it up in cheap theme ribbon <laughs> yeah i'm out of tea you're out of coffee it's time to go we've literally managed to talk for two hours um, I'll say again, thank you so much from both of us. It's this community, the crafting, the time we spend with you, the time we spend watching you. Gosh, we have so many podcasts. Uh, we're getting caught up on mm -hmm. some of ours. We only have a couple, with like two or three more yeah, to watch, and we'll be we all caught up. We have a handful. We'll we'll link some of our favorite ones down below. We've checked out some new ones. There's literally so many have popped up this year, and they're all good. And it's, it's been so great to connect with people. Different. Yeah, they're all different. It's been great to connect with people. We've been joining uh, a Thursday night Zoom knitting group, which has been so nice. We've had our every other Saturday social distance knitting. And, and I think now more than ever, it's just, it's important to, to do things that bring you peace or comfort. We've got a lot going on in the world right now, certainly a right. lot going on in the United States. Uh, just a, a lot to be thinking about in general. So it's it's nice to come together and connect in person uh, or live, but virtually or watching podcasts, bringing podcasts to you. So keep the comments mm -hmm. coming. Uh, harass this one if you can, because it brings so much entertainment to our evenings. He loves it. I have to say this. He loves it when you guys are sassy to me. I love it too, but pe people think he's, he's the sweet and innocent one. Mm -mm. He's the instigator, for sure. He'll deny it, but it's true. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Be well, stay safe, craft away, and hopefully as we're wrapping up canning season and the weather cools down here, uh, our time outside mm -hmm. greatly decreases. We'll get back into our yeah. every we'll, every other week schedule. We'll look forward podcasting. to coming, yeah, every couple of weeks, hopefully. But uh, be well, take care. We look forward to seeing you soon. And thanks for everything. Happy crafting.